Hello everyone, I'm João Marcos from That's Brilliant. In this video, we're going to talk about the derivative of natural log of x. We're going to see the mathematical proof of the derivative of this function. And just remembering, uh, we have a function, let's consider f of x, and it's equal to natural log of x. And this natural log is the same thing of saying the log base e of x. So when we have a logarithm base e, we call it natural log. We can do that. Uh, we, we call a logarithm base e of natural log. This e is a mathematical constant. It's approximately 2.718 and it continues. And uh, it's also called Euler's number. And it's very important to calculus as we have already seen in previous videos. And to, to, we want to know in this video f prime of x, the derivative of this function. And if you remember uh, some of our, of our previous videos uh, in which we proved, we mathematically proved the derivative of uh, logarithmic functions, we uh, proved that if we have, for example, let's consider g of x equal to log base a of x. And a here is just a constant. We saw that g prime of x is equal to 1 over x natural log of a. So if we apply this here, we are going to have that uh, we have a rhythm base z of x. The derivative of this function is going to be 1 over, and just using this equation, it's going to be x times natural log of a. A is the base of the logarithm. Here, the base is e, so natural log of e. But remember that this is 1 over x times log base e of e. And this is 1. So we, did do, we can prove here that the derivative of natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. But uh, this way of proving is quite simple. It's just using an equation we deduced in the previous videos. So let's deduce this uh, derivative in another way. So we're going to do in another manner. Using uh, the, the definition of derivatives, uh, the, the limit definition of derivatives. So we, we know that if we have a function f of x, f prime of x can be written as the limit when h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x and all of this divided by h. This is uh, a limit definition of a derivative. And we're going to apply this, this definition to logarithm by, uh, logarithm by z of x, natural log of x. So we're going to have, let's continue here, f of x is natural log of x. So we have that. This is equal to limit to the limit when h approaches zero. And here, f of x, f of x plus h is natural log of x plus h, since f of x is natural log of x. So f of x plus h is natural log of x plus h minus natural log of x. And all of this divided by h. And here we are going to remember a property of logarithms. Uh, that, that we see when we see the logarithms. And it's, it, it says the following. If we have logarithm base e of b over c, we can split this logarithm into uh, a subtraction of two logarithms. So we have log base a of b minus log base a of c. So this is a property of, log of logarithms. We are not going to, to prove it in this video. It's, we see this when we study logarithms. But you can split a, uh, a, logari a logarithm that has a division in its argument in, into two uh, uh, logarithms, a subtraction of two logarithms. And here we have a subtraction of two logarithms with the same base. Which base? E, because it's natural log and natural log. So we're going to and do its properties. We're going to do the property in a uh, reverse way. So we have a subtraction of logarithms. We have a subtraction of logarithms of 
or same days. We're going to create just one algorithm with a division in its argument. So here we have this is going to be equal to uh, the limit when h approaches zero, and then we have natural log. And before that, let's do something. Instead of putting everything divided by h, let's put everything multiplied by 1 over h, which is the same, but this is going to be useful in the next step. So, uh, in doing this property, we're going to have natural log of x plus h over x. Here, x plus h divided by x. This argument divided by this argument. And uh, we know that this is equal to the limit that h approaches 0. And what's this? Uh, it's, it's quite simple. If we have, for example, uh, x plus h over x, we can say this is x over x plus h over x. So this is equal to 1 plus x over h. So we are going to write this this way here. So we're going to have natural log of uh, 1 plus h over x. And uh, you may have noticed that I didn't put this 1 over h right in front of this natural log because we're going to use another property. This 1 over h is coming right up here. And this is another property of logarithms we also study when we see logarithms. So, the property basically says if we have log base a of b raised to the power of c, this can be written as c times log base z of b. So, uh, we are not going to prove this in this video. We study this when we study logarithms. But it's we can think that the, the exponent of the argument of the logarithm comes multiplying the logarithm. And here, we're, we just undid this process, this property. So we had a number multiplying this logarithm. We put this number as an exponent of the argument of the logarithm, which you can do, because if you have an exponent in the argument, you can put it multiplying the logarithm. So if you have a number multiplying the logarithm, you can put it as an exponent of the argument of the logarithm. So let's uh, go to the next step. We're going to create a variable here. And let's call it, for example, uh, u. So let's say u is equal to h over x. And we're going to put u right here. Instead of this, we're going to write u. So we have to evaluate this limit. When h approaches 0, is what's happening here. What happens to u? So, h approaches 0, you can, we can see that u also approaches 0. When h comes closer and closer to 0, um, u also becomes closer and closer to 0. So, when h approaches 0, u also approaches 0. So, this is going to be the limit when u approaches 0 of natural log of 1 plus u. And here, what's 1 plus h? Let's see. Here, let's isolate h. Multiplying in this equation here. We are talking about this right now. Multiplying both sides by x, we have that h is equal to u times x. So, 1 over h is equal to 1 over u times x. So, uh, here, instead of putting 1 over h, we're going to put 1 over u times x. But instead of writing u, 1 over u times x, let's put 1 over u times 1 over x. Which is the, sh which is the same, but it's going to be more useful if we put this this way for the next step. So, uh, let's do the following. Uh, we have this property here that when we have uh, an exponent in the argument, we can put it multiplying the logarithm. We're going to do that, but just 
for the 1 over x. So let's keep our math going. We have that this is equal to the limit when u approaches 0. And here, the exponent comes multiplying the logarithm. So 1 over x times uh, natural log of 1 plus. And here, let's create another variable. It's going to be easier for us if we create one more variable. So let's create, for example, let's say m, the variable m. So let's say m. m is going to be 1 over u. So we can see, we have to evaluate this limit to change this variable here that's approaching something. And here, u is approaching 0. So when u approaches 0, when this number here comes closer and closer to 0, when this number uh, becomes smaller and smaller, this division here becomes higher and higher. So we can see that when u approaches 0, m approaches infinity. So here we are going to change that. Instead of u approaching 0, we are going to put m approaching infinity. And here, 1 plus u, we can see here that uh, u is equal to 1 over m. So we're going to put 1 over m. And uh, here we have already, uh, we put this uh, exponent in front of the logarithm. This exponent 1 over u stays here. So 1 over u, we have just said that 1 over u is m. So this exponent, 1 over x, we put it before the logarithm. And this 1 over u, we uh, put inside of it, we put m. So keep keeping our math going, we have that. Uh, this limit is evaluating m. It's when m approaches infinity. So uh, this 1 over x here doesn't depend uh, on the m. So we can put this 1 over m in front of the limit, out of the limit. Uh, sorry, not the 1 over m, the 1 over x. The limit is when m approaches infinity. This 1 over x doesn't depend on the m at all. So we can put it out of the, out of the limit. So this is going to be the limit. And instead of writing... Uh, yes, you can can do something different here. So we put this out of the out of the limit. And this logarithm here is the same natural log, the same writing log base e, right? And e log is, is saying the name of the function. E is a it's a number, it's a constant. So log base e doesn't depend on the m. The argument of the logarithm does depend, but not the, the log or the e. So we can put the, the limit inside of the argument of the logarithm because uh, this, this function is constant, is constant at this point. So we can say that this is natural log. And here we have the limit when m approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over m, all of this raised to m. And uh, so again, what did we do? Log base e doesn't depend on m. And so we can put this limit inside of the argument of the logarithm. Uh, with respect to this logarithm, natural log of 1 plus 1 over m, all of this raised to m, just the argument of the logarithm depends on m. E and log doesn't depend on m. So we can put this out of the limit or, or if you prefer put the limit inside of the argument. And it's just what I did here. And we can do that because this function is continuous, is continuous at this point. So remember what is this limit? This limit is the number e. Uh, the number e have a value. Numerical value. 
But this, we uh, see this in calculus. We can uh, write this number using exactly this limit. We can say that E, uh, where can I write it? Uh, you can write that E is equal to the limit when many number, if you prefer, M is what we are using here. When M approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over M of this raised to M. E is this limit. So instead of putting all this limit, we can say this is equal to 1 over X times natural log of E. And as we have already seen, natural log of E is log base E of E, which is 1. So 1 times 1 over x is equal to 1 over x. And here we have just deduced, deduced the, the derivative of the function natural log of x. And here we have a, a condition for this to be true. x must be greater, greater than 0. x cannot be 0 because uh, we cannot divide by 0. And I have videos explaining that on that period. And x cannot be negative because here we, we are considering this function and we only define the logarithmic function when the argument of the function is positive. This argument cannot be uh, less or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero. This argument for this, for this function to be defined, x must be greater than zero. So we just have this condition here for this to be true. But we have just deduced that the derivative of the function natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. So rewriting here, this is equal to uh, ugx of natural log of x. So this is it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.